friends, Don Wilson here for another exciting episode, as the record turns. Uh, sitting on my front porch at the moment. It's an absolutely beautiful day out. Take a look at that. It's lovely. Center City, Philadelphia. Often don't find scenery like that. Anyway, so uh, I was fortunate enough to, uh, in a recent auction, to get a uh, cracked copy of um, the uh, the King Oliver Jeanette Crooked Blues. Um, the record's in pretty decent condition other than the crack, and the crack was old enough that it had split open. So uh, I've already begun work on it, but uh, I've paused that so I could uh, show you a little bit about the process. Uh, hopefully uh, this might help some of you. So I'm going to turn the camera around and uh, start to show you the actual process. Now I often do this on a uh, uh, heated, uh, geez, what do they call it, uh, a water bath for um, a uh, rotary evaporator. You can find them on eBay. They're pretty cheap, uh, really accurate temperature controls. But, um, you know, the, uh, the back of my car facing the sun here is also a good temperature on a nice moderate day. I'm willing to bet that it's probably about uh, 120 to 150 degrees Fahrenheit uh, on the disc. We'll check that in a moment. Uh, but you'll notice that it's sitting there, and I've been checking it every few minutes. Uh, make sure that it's perfectly flat. Uh, it's also on a eighth inch thick polished aluminum disc. Uh, the material of the disc doesn't matter, just as long as it's sturdy and it has a polished finish, so it doesn't uh, leave any impression marks uh, that might affect the fidelity of the record. Uh, now I'm going to take the record out of the car and uh, I'll show you the crack and um, uh, how we're going to work it closed. Now it is quite windy out and it's a little cool so we don't have much time to work. Um, as you can see with the thermometer the disc is at 135 degrees Fahrenheit and it's very uncomfortable to handle. Uh, it does have this crack that you can see. So this is the third session that I've done with closing this crack and what I do is work around the perimeter and pushing down and forcing it this way. It's almost like a massage uh, and that's why it's important that this steel plate be um, or this metal plate be something that's rather uh, polished and rather stiff otherwise we would um, bend the plate and the record in the process. Uh, it needs to be polished because as you can see with the amount of force that I'm pushing down with, it would um, put impressions of what's ever on the plate onto the disc. Now with the third time that I've done this, you can see the crack is almost perfectly closed. Uh, once it cools, it may open up again and I suspect that probably one more session will be in order. Uh, I'm also going to gently floss this edge. Uh, the outside was open more than the inside and there was also uh, previous repairs which were a little shoddy. So a little bit of quick flossing. Um, okay. Uh, that flossing was just to remove any um, particulate. So we're now at 110 degrees and I can feel that the um, the shellac is re-solidified and we're no longer going to be able to uh, work with it anymore. So I'm going to put it back in the sunlight uh, in the back of the car and I think one more time we'll do it. And for this last time we're going to uh, try the other side. Um, you can see here that the, uh, well maybe you can't, but the other side seems to be split open a hair more. Uh, so we're going to massage that side. Now as I mentioned earlier, the inside of the crack was pretty tight, but the outside, um, the outside of the crack is open more. And that's what makes this a pain in the butt. That's why it takes so much force. If it was an even crack all the way around, it could just be heated and closed. 
but it's not. So the record actually has to be stretched. And that is why I'm usually using my measly little 160 pound body to push it into place. Be nice to make some sort of a machine to do this, but well, I haven't thought of anything that fancy yet. <laughs> See that? I vegan. I wish I could focus in, but my hands are a little occupied. But it's looking really good right now. God, look at that. So this side was open a little bit more. Let's see if I can find it in the camera. Where's the lens? There it is. Yeah, there's the crack. That's really quite wonderful. I'm really happy with that. Um, you know, a little filler with uh, something like Weld Bond um, might do well. Uh, my goal isn't to copy this one. Uh, years ago, Scott Musel was kind enough to loan me a copy that he had found at a thrift store of all places. So, you know, it just goes to show the treasures are still out there. But at this point, I'm pretty happy with this record. Um, I'll probably use uh, a little weld bond or uh, some uh, one of the stronger white glues. Um, I consider white glues to be uh, removable. They can be flossed out or even uh, with water. Uh, so that would be uh, something good to hold it together so that the disc would be playable. And uh, then I'll be very happy to have this one in, uh, in my collection. Uh, such a rare disc with such a nice label. and Even the disc is clean enough that I'm very happy to have it. So um, I hope this helped some of you and that this information comes in handy. And as always, uh, thank you for watching.